Um, my name is Van Du, and I'm the program manager for the American College and University President's Climate Commitment here at Second Nature, a nonprofit organization with a mission to create a sustainable society by transforming higher education. And in um, a couple minutes, I will share a little bit more information about the American College and University President's Climate Commitment. But I would first like to introduce today's um, panelists. First, Dr. James Bray, the Director of Education Programs at the American Meteorological Society. Jason Szymanski, um, as Professors of Chemistry and Geoscience at Monroe County Community College. And Dr. John Warford, Professors of Geography at Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. Dr. James Bray, Jason, and uh, John will share with us uh, more information about the AMS um, diversity, climate studies diversity workshop, their experience, um, the logistics of what it's, it will entail. And then um, the last 10, 15, 10, 15 minutes at the end, there will be time for questions and answers. And so please um, just want to, a friendly reminder, please submit your questions at any time and uh, we will select your questions as they come in and um, share, share that with the presenters. So, um, so before I hand off to Dr. Bray at AMS, I would like to share with you a brief snapshot of the ACU PCC and its progress. Um, the, the American College and University President's Climate Commitment, also known as the ACU PCC, has helped higher education become the only sector in the U.S. with a critical mass committed to the scientifically necessary goal of climate neutrality. Since its launch in 2007, more than 730 colleges and universities in the U.S. have signed on to um, the ACU PCC, representing all 50 states, D.C., and every type of public and private education. We currently have um, six, uh, um, 679 active signatories um, in the network, and it's a highly visibility, highly visible high visibility nation, national initiative um, uh, and a network led by presidents and chancellor um, looking at the operational as well as curriculum uh, components in, at, at camp on campuses and how to implement um, climate action plans to achieve climate neutrality. Um, so as I mentioned, we currently have 679 active signatories representing nearly 6.5 million students. Um, that's approximately one-third of all colleges and university students in the U.S. Um, as, of, uh, as of the end of 2013, we have over 500 climate action plans. And as you can see, uh, schools have now started to submit their progress report on the, their climate action plan. And um, there's a huge financial savings from implemented projects um, based on their climate action plan. And not just that, but the um, cumulative annual carbon uh, CO2 emissions um, is approximately 1.7 million metric tons. So oh, overall, it's a network as an initiative, um, a voluntary initiative for that. Uh, we are doing great. <laughs> So for more information and resources about, about the ACU PCC, as well as how to implement the ACU PCC, um, you can find more information of that on our website and or um, contact me for more information. So now I would like to hand this over to Dr. Gray for more information on the AMS Climate Studies program. Thank you, Van. And it's good to be here today. Welcome, everyone. Um, I want to talk today about enhancing climate and sustainability focused curriculum at ACU PCC signatory institutions through the unique AMS Second Nature Climate Studies Diversity Project. Next, please. It's really no secret that we are in a changing climate. The footprints of climate change surround us, and this has driven um, AMS to action. And um, a lot of the examples are there, record low Arctic sea ice, retreating mountain glaciers, global sea level rises, um, severe storms like Hurricane Sandy, um, all point to a, a need to um, reduce our carbon emissions and 
uh, prepare for the warming that's already in the pipeline. Um, one of our chief supporters of the NSF also underscores the needs for increasing public literacy in earth system sciences in general and particularly in climate science um, so that we prepare a workforce that's prepared to meet the challenges of the future. Next. I want to talk a little bit about the AMS education program because that's the context for the setting in which um, uh, our program exists and then talk a bit about our undergraduate courses, courses that we've uh, created for undergraduate institutions in the U.S. and then more specifically about our diversity projects which is really the focus of, of this webinar. Next. So the education program, why do we do what we do? Next. Our parent organization, the American Meteorological Society, decided around 1990 to create an education program. AMS is just a little shy of 100 years old. We have uh, uh, just shy of 15,000 members. We organize um, some pretty unique and important scientific conferences annually. We publish 11 leading journals. We certify consultants and broadcasters. You probably are aware of the uh, seal of approval or the certified uh, broadcast meteorologist seal uh, on your TV broadcasts. Um, we have had significant educational activity, robust educational activity since 1990. Uh, AMS is a nonprofit with the mission of promoting the development and dissemination of information and education on the atmospheric and related oceanic and hydrologic sciences and the advancement of their professional applications in service to society. And I think maybe the last three words are the most important, in service to society. Next. The AMS education program's mission is a little tighter. Um, we have three main goals. First of all, a broad overarching goal of better equipping students in math and science. And the way, the way to do that is to provide professional development opportunities for teachers nationwide. And we do just that. And we do that by providing them with credit courses and um, uh, that work is well known. Uh, as a spin-off to that earlier work, uh, that other work with teachers, we have spun off some in innovative undergraduate course packages which we license to universities, colleges, community colleges, training programs, the U.S. Navy, pretty much anybody that would like uh, a course package. And all of this work um, in the previous two areas have allowed us to facilitate um, the development of really robust partnerships among institutions and individuals. And that is very exciting work and very important work that we do. Next. We have a lot of opportunities. We can prepare the next generation of earth scientists by promoting work workforce development. And we can really encourage members of underrepresented groups to aspire to an earth science career. Um, I happen to believe that uh, earth science is intrinsically interesting, intrinsically exciting, and we can provide some insight into that. And through our, our partnerships and our membership, we can introduce role models to emulate. Next. Our undergraduate courses, next. We have three undergraduate courses, one in weather, one in oceanography, and one in climate studies. And these are introductory courses where students use real world and real time data to study the topic at hand. And that's a very, very powerful thing. Students like to look at real time stuff, stuff that's going on today. Um, it emphasizes hands-on investigations and working with data and critical thinking skills, all of the tools that the, the uh, scientist uses to uh, come to their, their uh, uh, conclusions. We design and license these courses. They can be offered in a variety of learning environments. They're particularly good offered online. I've done that myself for many, many years with the University of Wisconsin. And NASA, NOAA, and NSF supported diversity projects facilitate implementation at minority serving institutions nationwide. And I'll talk a little bit about how we've made impact there. Next. Our climate studies course um, is, uh, our course structures are pretty much what you'd want in a course and then some. 
Um, we have fully integrated course packages with a color textbook, an investigations manual with labs uh, for students to work with, um, a course website with the current events or a weekly news and current studies investigations, which we create in our own office here um, in Washington, D.C. every week. And the AMS Climate Studies is going to be available solely in ebook format for the 2014-15 the, the academic year. This is a much more cost-effective and sustainable approach uh, to putting out these materials. And I think uh, we've done some experimentation with our investigations manual this year, and the students like the cost break and they like the format. Um, we provide extensive resources for course instructors. Uh, there's a faculty re website, a resource CD with PowerPoints, and and those sorts of things. There's a faculty mentoring program, so if you're a faculty member that's new to teaching this, we'll link you up to somebody from your discipline that has successfully taught this course before. Uh, we all have all of our materials available in course management system compatible files so that you can easily uh, import your quiz questions or your exam questions for auto-scoring. And all of our investigations, for example, can be auto-scored by introducing those those files in Respondus format. Next, please. Our climate studies course focuses on the science and the societal impacts of climate change. Um, it provides a foundation for the Earth's climate system, how it works, the radiational laws, basic understandings of climate behavior and contributions of human activities to global climate change, which, of course, the major contribution is human activities. Societal and ecosystem vulnerability in response to climate variability and change is also an important consideration in our materials. And the challenge of achieving sustainable development um, is presented and works very, very well um, with those campuses and those instructors that are sort of focusing on a more sustainable future. Um, we uh, have a great introduction to widely recognized science-based information sources on climate change and impacts, the IPCC, including the latest one, um, the GCRP, and, and some of the other important uh, peer-reviewed uh, reports. It's a great primer for students entering business or technical green programs, and it's a great program for uh, liberal arts students as well. We have this course has been licensed by 110 institutions since we introduced it in the fall of 2010. Next, please. The course implementation, we can have you offer the course if you're an experienced science instructor or if you're just new to the field. If you're new and you're a little ambivalent, we'll help, help you with the mentoring I mentioned before. Um, the setting, it can range from traditional lecture lab to totally online. Any way you want to use it, and there are many materials to use, you have to pick and choose, this will be perfect for the goals of your course. The students receive local institutional credit and they purchase their course materials through their local campus bookstore or through the AMS online store, which uh, ensures the, the uh, uh, AMS uh, uh, price without a, any particular markup for a bookstore. And students find that very popular. Next, please. Our diversity projects are well known. Next. It reaches those that are underrepresented and um, in, in the earth sciences. And our projects have been going on for a long time. We started out in 2001 with NSF support to create the AMS Weather Studies Diversity Projects. And 145 minority serving institutions uh, participated in that. More than uh, 16,000 students have taken the weather course that that introduced. And in, in many cases, it was the first meteor meteorology course offered for more than uh, two-thirds of those institutions. We did the same thing for three years with our ocean studies. 75 MSIs took that, and more than 8,000 students took the course. About 50 of those MSIs implemented both, sort, both courses so that uh, they developed kind of a budding earth science program within their campus. Next, please. The Climate Studies Diversity Project um, involved our partnership with Second Nature, and we're very, very glad to have that strong partnership. And the goal is to involve 100 MSIs over five years in climate studies. And 52 MSIs were represented at the May 2012 and uh, 2013 workshops and the follow-up workshops at the AMS annual meeting. We are currently recruiting 25 more MSF 
MSI faculty for the 18 to 23 May 2014 um, workshops, the ones coming up this coming May, for all expenses paid course implementation workshop in Washington, D.C., and then with the follow-up at our annual meeting in Phoenix in January 2015. Um, the D.C. workshops feature scientists from NASA, NOAA, Howard University, George Mason University. D.C. is a terrific place to hold a climate workshop. And the re participants receive the course materials. They offer then the climate studies course the year following with our assistance. And of course, we continually update course materials. Next, please. The implementation of the AMS studies course helps a, a, a signatory institution fulfill the curriculum component of the climate action plan. And um, this you know, can be uh, sort of an introduction or an enhancement of, of climate and sustainability focused uh, curricula at your institution. And it can integrate with a wide variety of sustainable efforts, um, service learning, and all kinds of other things at your institution. And uh, it, it, it enhances those sustainability efforts. And you can see there the 22 signatory MSIs currently implementing the AMS climate studies. There are a wide variety of institutions from the largest to the smallest, uh, private and public. And, uh, and it's a really, really a great group that we're, we're happy to work with. Next, please. Um, the AMS Weather, Ocean, and Climate Studies have introduced geoscience education to 780 institutions, uh, a little, uh, uh, almost half of which have been MSIs. The turnkey course design makes this course a possible introduction at just about any kind of school. The course encourages additional student exploration of the geosciences, perhaps uh, introduces people to the opportunities available in careers in science or science teaching. The diversity project workshops um, that were, uh, were, have been held and they're successful and the next offering is May 18th through the 23rd, 2014. Um, offering AMS climate studies strengthens the curriculum component of an institution's uh, president's climate commitment climate action plan and provides substantive faculty professional development for those that are interested in making climate a big deal on campus. And to join, to get signed up, to to uh, get in touch with us for, for this particular workshop, you can see the website there. Now I'd like to turn it over for uh, some additional reflection and some specific examples about the workshop to my colleague Jason Szymanski from Monroe C County Community College. Jason? Thank you, Dr. Bray. Um, yes, uh, hello everyone. I'd like to uh, share my experience and involvement in the 2012 uh, Climate Change Diversity Workshop. Um, next, please. The uh, Monroe Community College was a uh, is a college that was ready for a climate studies course. Um, we're in upstate New York, and it serves both urban and suburban students. Uh, the current enrollment somewhere near sixteen thousand, and we are incidentally a signatory to the ACU PCC. Um, there were some courses in existence that addressed climate change uh, in their curriculum, such as geography, um, a recently developed sustainability course, oceanography, and there's a weather and climate. Um, and there's some majors that were looking for a climate change course also, including geoscience, environmental science, a recently um, developed sustainability program, and agriculture and food science, and uh, applied technology with some green technology uh, in invested. So it really was uh, ready for a climate science course and it just so happened that my interests uh, were um, to develop such a course. Next please. So um, at the time I was uh, prior to this workshop I was developing curriculum and beginning and initiating the curriculum process in my institution for a climate change course and it just so happened that I learned about this implementation workshop um, so I was I believe the first cohort uh, of the implement of this diversity program and there I am pictured under the giant red arrow. Uh, and this here pictured is my cohort on our very first field excursion to the uh, Goddard Space Flight Institute. And um, there was a full day of workshops and of tours uh, at that location. So it really was a, a, a great timing uh, for this to happen for me and my curriculum. Um, and the AMS Education Office clearly had done this before, as you heard Dr. Bray mention with the ocean studies and the weather studies. 
Next, please. The workshop consisted of both uh, those field excursions as well as some uh, in-house seminars. And um, as you heard some of the lists of who they have presenting at these, they're, they are premier cutting-edge researchers. Um, also, during the workshop seminars, you'll hear um, some ideas of how to implement the course, some of the uh, components of the, the course content package, as well as some of the uh, successful case studies of teachers who have put this course into action before. Next, please. The, uh, here's a couple of snapshots of the field experiences. Really, literally, only a couple of snapshots because there it was it was a full week, uh, very rich in topic and and content and discussion. Um, so a couple of highlights was the hyper wall here you pictured um, through NASA's Visualization Studio, um, which I use in class today. Um, those examples. Also, here's a picture of a satellite being. Uh, Constructed, we got a full tour of the facility, um, showing how they test and, and build these. You can see here the clean room um, that we're not allowed into, um, and also the uh, Beltsville Center for Climate Change through Harvard University. And it was I was really impressed with the um, the educational facility, the students working on projects, and I learned quite a bit about how um, climate is monitored and and uh, how the sensors and equipment they use to kind of monitor and research uh, various climate change that's being described there, um, such as like ozone measurement, which uh, something I didn't know how they did that, but was surprised to learn. So next, please. So um, as a result of this implementation workshop, there's a few things I really uh, strongly got out of it. So um, as I was developing the class um, before the workshop, it really came out to be kind of a paleoclimate class, because my background is in paleoclimatology. And I had some meteorology courses um, in my undergraduate, but I really needed a 21st century perspective. What's happening today in terms of research, of, of issues, of concerns, and, and you know, what are the current levels of, of, of CO2? And so I needed to kind of get updated and briefed in that area. What was nice about the workshop is it covered so many topics, as you can saw from some of those slide titles, is that uh, no, no matter what component you might be missing, uh, and a gap from your education, you can kind of get the basics um, in there. Um, so another thing I got was it's a very holistic viewpoint, and that's something I was searching for in developing a climate change course, because our institution, being a community college, was looking for an introduction to climate science and not an advanced level that I, I came from with my graduate degree. So it was nice to um, get a good background, a good premise for uh, a multifaceted, holistic uh, climate change course, which address not just the physical science, but also some of the social sciences. Um, so for example, I, I knew about Arctic sea level, um, uh, Arctic ice melts, um, but what I learned at the workshop was uh, all the, the factors the Navy needs to think of and the concerns for national defense. It's something I hadn't thought of before. I knew about sea level rise, but how that impacts our human um, relief efforts in uh, other, other nations. And so that was, uh, I think, really necessary for me to, to build a strong introductory course. And then finally, through the workshop, we developed action plans of how to initiate the course and kind of a strategy of how to put it into the classroom. As I mentioned, I already had the curriculum kind of going through the college, so that was a good start. So if you're thinking of doing this, maybe get that, that process started, and then you can really get the course design through this workshop. Next, please. So um, one of the outcomes of this was to um, present my uh, course plan and my, my strategy for implementation at the annual AMS meeting in Austin, Texas in 2013, this time last year. And I, um, I was able to do a poster press presentation. I got some feedback on my course design um, and the network I built there with other professors um, also building courses. And I was just surprised to learn that there's so many different ways you can introduce this course um, like I mentioned, there's like social justice. It could be a social justice course, or it could be a physical science course, or even some professors were using it as um, an atmospheric science class. So there's many ways you could adapt it. And also, I was impressed at this workshop of just the cutting edge um, ways that uh, we use satellite and real time uh, research uh, to emphasize accurate measurement and forecasting in, in uh, atmospheric science. So. All of it really galvanized for me the need for a climate literacy. Next, please. So 
the course as it is today exists in two formats. Uh, I have a face-to-face -face lecture, and which I use the uh, AMS Climate Studies course uh, textbook and um, laboratory manual, as well as the resources that are online. I also last summer developed a fully online uh, course, which includes a laboratory that's online. And so it's kind of nice because now um, for students seeking an extra credit to get a general elective, they could take the online lab as well as a face-to-face -face lecture, and so I can offer it in some different ways to reach different uh, students with different needs. Next, please. Here's a sample of the syllabus, and um, you can see it follows, really, it covers a, a broad spectrum of topics, and it gives students a really strong basis of climate science. Um, what's nice about the course content package is its flexibility and adaptability. You can see there's a couple instances where I wanted to include or highlight some different cases. So we did a, a water budget analysis um, during the talking about water cycles. Um, I also had students do presentations and projects on various climate proxies. And then finally, we kind of ended the course looking at um, the political climate that the, the climate change was being discussed and how do we respond to climate change and so I featured this uh, documentary called The Odd President which um, is literally about a, uh, a nation trying to keep its head above water as sea level uh, rises. Next please. So um, the content package that I used I found it to be um, very adaptable, uh, ready to go. It really I felt covered the gambit of topics so I, that's one component I felt I was missing as I was trying to develop my curriculum by myself. And so that was a nice way to round it out and to really give a, a whole snapshot of what's going on in climate change today. And also the compatibility of the software was excellent. The Respondus program, which I learned of at the workshop, um, seamlessly transfers into our Blackboard. So as Dr. Bray mentioned, there's uh, laboratory and self-scoring things that really make uh, save me uh, hundreds of you know, tens of hours of work and it really makes it much easier to deliver the course in an online format. And finally, the, 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 all the climate information is updated real time. There's real examples with measurements being taken um, you know, right now and that's real exciting and it isn't very engaging for the students. Next slide, please. I think as a teacher, the um, most important resources I have are my connections and my uh, contacts and so I was able to really strengthen my network um, of not only my peers but also with the various uh, organizations that I was uh, that we visited and were um, uh, told about and I felt that really um, I'm able to I'm now at the front of the conversation of, of climate change and although um, I haven't I'm not actively doing research in the topic I, I really know what research is being done and so I can transmit that to the students and I just have a wealth of examples I can bring to the classroom from these various uh, supportive institutions. Uh, next, please. So uh, that's sort of a snapshot of, of how I uh, went through the workshop and brought to my college a climate studies course. And uh, currently, we are uh, looking at uh, offering it even a night section to maybe attract a, a different population of people that are working full time um, because we feel so strongly about its importance to uh, literacy and understanding global events. So thank you. Here's my email if you'd like to get in contact with me or I'm happy to ask a, answer any questions you might have about the workshop or, or the course. Um, thanks very much. And so I'd like to uh, introduce the next presentation, uh, who is uh, Dr. John Warford. John, are you there? Okay, while uh, John figure out how to unmute himself, um, I just would like to remind um, everyone to continue put in questions. Um, and so I, I apologize, there seems to be a little d a d a technical difficulty to get John to speak. So why don't we just um, take a pause and um, there are some questions um, from the panel, uh, from, for the panel. So let's start with, um, there's actually one uh, really good logistic questions for Dr. Bray, uh, if you can um, elaborate more. But 
Dr. Bray, do you know, can one more than one faculty um, per college can attend the workshop? Um, we usually limit the all expense paid part to one faculty member, but we do recognize that sometimes um, it's useful for teams to, uh, to attend. And um, so that we do consider that if the you know second person um, would be able to pay their their own way to the workshop, um, we have an overall cap to the workshop, and um, uh, so it may be contingent upon how many other people uh, are actually signing up. But um, it is sometimes possible, and we have done that. But that second individual. Um, is not covered by the grant and they have to pay their own way or they have to have their institution pay their way. Great, thank you. And another question we received is also, do you have to be a signatory of the ACU PCC to participate in this workshop? And from our perspective or from our end, um, no, we from the PCC we have about 102 minority serving institutions that is part of the network and we strongly encourage um, this, the, the existing signatories to participate or to look into participating in this great opportunity because um, it would be a great beginning for um, fostering as well as developing curriculum um, on that aspect that help implement um, the curriculum aspects of the climate action planning. Um, and so um, last year we had, so from, from the past two years, we had 21 signator, uh, MSI signatories participate in the workshop. And we have received great review about the workshop um, and how they have been helpful as um, the contribution to implementing the ACU PCC. So we strongly encourage our PCC signatory to do so. And hopefully um, other participants of the workshop um, who are not, not yet signatories of um, the ACU PCC would have the opportunity to network with the, the current signatories um, who are attending the workshop and um, you know uh, have uh, see the benefits as well as, as um, the, the great progress that the, that the ACU PCC are leading um, and sort of that peer networking will be helpful. Um, jo uh, Dr. Bray, do you have any additional thought on that? Um, you know, we sort of view it as kind of a handshake. If if somebody is a signatory and they don't know about our course, um, you know, Second Nature has helped us connect with those people. And um, we certainly recruit people that are not signatory people, but we very, very strongly believe in the President's climate commitment and we very much encourage people to explore becoming a signatory and uh, very often um, it takes a faculty champion on a campus to to get the uh, the uh, chancellor or the president to consider um, being a signatory, and, and we, I think we've had some people that have acted in that role, and I think that we've gotten some people to become signatories. But it is not a requirement, and there's no overt pressure at all. Uh, we we just want you to start a good a good climate course, uh, and we'll help you do that, and and help you in any other way to lead your campus to sustainability. Right. Exactly. Thank you. So this question, um, was, sorry, we're still trying to figure out the technical issues with John, um, Dr. Warford, but this question, Jason, maybe you can address this, but this is a really great question. Um, what was your personal favorite part of the workshop that you attended um, last year, and what would you say was the most useful for your college? There we go. Thank you. They muted me, everybody, just so you know. It was, it was unfair. <laughs> um, so I think that the, the highlight to me was um, really, I, I'm always a fan of field trips. I think that's what got me into geosciences to begin with. But the, the field excursion and really going to these very premier institutions as well as hearing these uh, cutting edge scientists. I, well, things that really impressed me are just the things I, I've just never considered before, such as how do you communicate climate change to the nation? Like, what are some of the obstacles? Um, also, what are ways that we monitor climate today is something that uh, I was excited. So NASA, uh, the National Weather Service, was pretty cool to go to also. I mean, the, the 
which uh, now I guess they're in a new location, which is really fancy. But just to see how they collect information, how they monitor, and, and that really is the, the first site that we get that that weather monitoring information out to the, the nation or to the public. So that was that was pretty excited. And finally, I think that the second question, what I brought back to my my college, um, besides the course itself, was also I think I gained at the um, the annual meeting in Austin, Texas, where I heard uh, the keynote speaker spoke about Hurricane Sandy, and that was sort of like, you know. On the tip of everyone's tongue, this the Frankenstorm, you know, the the giant storm that it just hit just a couple weeks of, uh, weeks ago, and it was uh, it was fun to bring all that right back to the classroom and talk about um, you know how unusual that event was, and uh, so that those are sort of the some of the highlights from my experience, and it, you know, like any workshop experience, it just really energizes um, you, and as a as instructor, the students really gain a lot from your energy in the classroom. Okay, great. Thank you, Jason. Um, and I'll, I can also attest to that as I um, also had the opportunity, um, thanks to AMS, to allow me to come along and, um, you know, see the workshop um, for myself. And I've learned so much. Um, and again, I, I think it echoes Jason's point of being able to be on field trip, also that peer networking with other faculties that are also interested in applying um, implementing the programs and also just you know um, that that pure knowledge is invaluable um, and so that was great so um, another question we have um, from the audience the audience is that how to be a signatory um, for a campus in Puerto Rico and so um, there are options um, we're more than happy um, to schedule something for us to talk off screen to but um, a quick a quick response for that is um, that we have the we have um, international we have international signatories and currently we do have one signatory from Puerto Rico so it would be um, delightful if we can gain more signatories international or um, you know within the U S so that's something we can definitely touch base with you um, on a different day. We have had so, faculty from a variety of Puerto Rican campuses participate in our, our diversity workshops in the past. Okay. So here's um, a question. Uh, GCC, I, I think um, if you can let me know what college. But this, this institution is not yet designated as an HSI, Historic Serving Institution. However, um, I mean, I'm sorry, Hispanic Serving Institutions. However, the percentage of Hispanic students supports an ongoing request. We currently offer six courses regarding meteorology, climate, and sustainability. And um, this institution is also an ACUPCC. Would um, this institution be eligible for attending the workshop, Dr. Bray? Yes, yes, you, your institution would if you had a percentage of at least 25% of your students in uh, minority uh, or underrepresented categories. So um, if you total up all of the students in underrepresented categories and, and that's tw at least 25% of your, your school's population, you are eligible. You do not have to have any kind of specific designation as an HSI or HBCU or anything like that. Um, of course, you know we have a lot of community colleges that participate uh, because they are minority-serving institutions, um, but may not have the designation, but they they do have the student numbers. Great. And one more question for Dr. Bray, also. Do you recommend um, the monthly webinars of the NOAA Climate Stewards Program for students and instructor? Um, when are they held and how do uh, the, the institutions register? Oh, I would very strongly recommend those webinars. They're, they're really spectacular. Um, uh, Peg Steffen and, and, uh, 
and uh, and the folks at uh, National Ocean Service, uh, part of NOAA, um, do a tremendous job with with climate stewards. And we've got a lot of our K-12 teachers that have become involved in that, and I think even including some of our college faculty members as well. Uh, I think the best way to to see when those webinars are are held or how to you know join the next cohort uh, come come fall would be to uh, just uh, Google climate stewards or NOAA climate stewards. And I think that would would connect you with uh, um, Bruce Moravchek or or Peg Steffen, who run an excellent program. Great. Okay, this is the next question. If we get the curriculum at our university, would it help our school get better grants to work off of? So perhaps this question, Jason, would you like to take on this question and? share some insight? Sure, absolutely. So the um, I think the focus of today's uh, defining crisis, defining problem is climate change. It's, it's an issue that's becoming increasingly more um, to the forefront of the attention of everyone, especially those that would be signing off on grants. So um, having a climate change class would really show the commitment to the uh, college in, um, for sustainability and sustainable growth. Um, and certainly they would recognize the need for um, getting good information across to, to the general public. Um, so I think it would definitely strengthen uh, any applications for grant writing. Great. Okay, so unfortunately um, there was a, difficult, a technical difficulty with um, Dr. John Warford at Florida A&M University. So, um, um, Dr. Bray, would you like to have um, the last word? I think we're going to try to figure out a different way, maybe have Dr. Warford from Florida A&M to um, write a blog to share with everyone, and then we will connect that, um, share that with um, the audience um, in the near future. But Dr. Bray, would you like to um, have um, some last words, and then we can close up the webinar for today. Okay, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. It's really been a pleasure to talk about our programs. We think that our programs are very effective and very special and, and leverage a, a lot of uh, growth among faculty and students alike. Um, we want to make sure that we acknowledge the fact that AMS Climate Studies um, from beginning to end has been very nicely supported by NASA. Uh, they're supporters of our, our, uh, our program in terms of the field trips. Um, and then the actual diversity project over the years, including climate studies, is uh, a, a recipient of a very generous grant from the National Science Foundation, um, and um, they, they make it all possible. So um, we are able to offer this to faculty at no cost to the faculty, and so that they can really take advantage of this without you know, feeling any kind of a, a personal pinch with, you know, uh, travel budgets being lowered and things like that. We we take care of the costs and and uh, you're pretty well taken care of when you when you come to our workshops. And um, the next slide, please. Um, if you have additional uh, uh, questions, you can um, really uh, you know call me or call other people that are associated with Second Nature or the Climate Commitment. Um, we'd like to thank our general sponsors for all of our activities, NSF, NASA, NOAA, and ONR, the Office of Naval Research. They've supported a lot of the development of the materials. These organizations also supply speakers um, to the workshop. Um, uh, we mentioned NOAA Climate Stewards. They usually provide a, a person to come as a resource person to talk about their programs and to provide information about how to get involved in their programs. Um, that's true of NASA and NSF and, and the other agencies as well. And we'd very, very much like to thank Second Nature, who has been a really terrific partner um, in this whole endeavor, and we fully support the American College and University President's climate commitment. If the academic institutions of this country can't show the country the way to go on lowering emissions, I don't know who can. And Second Nature and the President's climate commitment have really uh, set out on a great path here. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Gray, for the kind words. And thank you. Um, on behalf of Second Nature, I would like to thank Dr. Gray, uh, Jason, and John.
um, from Monroe County Community College in Florida and um, University for giving us the time and this opportunity to share with um, um, the audience about your experience as well as, as what the program is about. Um, if you have any questions, again, please uh, contact Dr. Gray um, or myself at bdu at secondnature.org. Um, we're more than happy to help and we're looking forward to, um, to share more information with you if you have other questions um, as it come up. And just one friendly reminder is that the deadline for applications for this uh, diversity workshop is um, March 15th. Um, and so again, if you have any questions, let us know. So thank you also everyone for uh, taking the time out this afternoon and joining us in this webinar. Um, have a great day. Thank you. Bye.